every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Adam Donnan, who is the CEO of the IES.org, which is the Institution of Environmental Sciences. And if you haven't heard of them before, this is a charitable organization that wants to raise public awareness of the environmental sciences. And if you're new here, and if you haven't done so before, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app because that can really help us get these kind of conversations out to more people and raise awareness for important causes like environmental sciences. Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with Great.com today. Pleasure to be here. So how would you describe the IES to someone that is not familiar with uh, your organization? As an organization, we're not specifically focused on on one problem like a lot of your guests have been in the past um, we're a professional body a membership organization that sees our role as building society's capacity to deal with a whole set of interlinking problems when you think about most of the grand challenges the big challenges that face society today they're either environmental in nature or in origin you know, climate change biodiversity loss hunger extreme weather even the current pandemic we're experiencing could be framed as an environmental problem. When you look at encroachment on wild habitats, making zoonotic transmission, but where a disease leaps from one species to another far more likely. To deal with all of these sets of crises, we need a strong, knowledgeable and ethical science profession that provides the understanding and capacity to deal with the issues. So let me give you a practical example of that. So a government might decide that it wants to deal with the number of deaths caused by a poor air quality. It can't just click its fingers and it's done. It needs to determine the source of that air pollution. Does it come from transport, wood burning, industry or construction? It needs to understand the atmospheric chemistry that's taking place, how pollutants are combining and degrading, forming new pollutants that may or, not, or may not be damaging to human health. Then it needs to be able to understand the interventions it can make to try and improve the situation. All these things take environmental scientists who are researching, monitoring, mod modeling and checking compliance. Professionals who work in um, sections like ours, sectors like ours, may not get as much of the spotlight as campaigners, but they really are the unsung heroes of the transition to a more sustainable and happier society. So what we do as an organization is to support both the discipline of environmental science and the people who work in the field. Our tagline is standing up for science, scientists and the natural world. We represent professionals from fields as diverse as air quality, land contamination, marine science and education, wherever you find environmental work underpinned by science. Our members try to follow our passion for the environment and are apologetic about promoting science to lead to behaviour change. Our role as an organisation is to equip our members not just with a technical understanding of the science, but with an understanding of how that science operates in context and the practical skills they need to promote a transition to a sustainable society. Hmm. That's a real important role that you guys are filling because you can totally see the interconnectedness of it all. And I haven't heard anyone else describe how so many problems come from is environmental in one way or another. So I really like the way you pinpointed that. So help me understand then what is the problems that scientists are facing? Is it that they don't get funded? Is it that they can't find the answers? Is it that even if they do find the answers, governments are not willing to implement the knowledge that you guys are finding? What challenges are you facing? That's a huge question. It's an excellent question. Um, so 
Yes, there's always problems on the research uh, side of things that um, uh, a lack of funding sometimes or a lack of prioritization of funding. But in many areas of environmental science, the uh, the scientific argument itself is almost over. So when you look at something like climate change, you know, there's a very strong evidence base, a, a indisputable evidence base of climate change and the, uh, it, 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 its impacts and its causes, um, you know, despite what you might might read in, in the media that still sometimes pretends that there's a debate to be had. Um, so the scientific question is already answered you know the basic science and what the next stage about that is how do you move from that kind of problem identification into that solution space where you start talking about okay you know we know this is an issue but what do we do about it and so much of environmental science this day, these days have shifted from from that problem identification into you know options appraisal about looking about if we make this intervention versus this in intervention you know, what gets the better outcome um, and i think that that makes for a much more exciting field now right so before scientists was researching is climate change happening now they're more researching what can we do about climate change and the more data politicians have to make decisions on the more cost effective they can perceive uh, the solutions yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a good good summary. Um, although I would have challenged the cost effectiveness, so because that's not always necessarily the driver behind um, some of these issues. So um, yes, you know, a sustainable economy does come into it, but a lot of it might be around having a healthier population. It might be looking at the well-being of individuals. It might be looking at a whole set of metrics that go beyond finance. Right. So. When you say race awareness, uh, what do you refer to then? Public engagement is always an interesting issue um, for scientists, and it's often done quite badly. Um, it's often done in a, a, a way in which science is projected as being the single source of expertise and the recipient, you know, the general public are there just to learn from the scientists. And that model of interactions between the population and, and, and science is uh, a outdated one and an ineffective one. And what we try and do as an organization is to move into a space where what we see as our role as an organization is to facilitate discussion within society and environmental science produces a set of evidence and that evidence can be there to underpin a discussion that takes place but just because the evidence points in a particular direction doesn't necessarily mean that society should straight away jump in that direction um, because things may not be politically uh, palatable, they may not be um, economically viable at that particular point. So you might look at some of the challenges of climate change and go, okay, tomorrow we need to ban um, fossil fuels. You know, the science might suggest that that's, that's the course of action to take, um, but it's not a practical set of uh, practical action in the short term for most societies. So um, I think there's an element of, of, of science taking a slightly more humble role where it says okay we have a set of evidence here that we can bring into this debate um and we will be you know active proponents of that evidence we, we, we won't let it be kind of um crushed down in the debate you know we're there to elevate uh, elevate the importance of that science but we recognize that it isn't the only narrative within society that there are other factors to consider that makes a lot of sense. So <clears throat> how far, so I see you, you guys, I see pure science and then it like goes into politics. And are you, where is your role in this? Are you kind of the bridge in between or are you empowering science or yeah, what is the role of the IES? Yeah, um, so we certainly do do a um, fair amount of policy outreach work. So. Um, a lot of that is kind of synthesizing um, the best available evidence into a digestible format um, for 
uh, politicians, um, but it's also starting to then try and answer some of the questions about how that science might be translated into policy. So having kind of frameworks or approaches that turn it into practical policy tools. Okay, okay. And what other things are you doing to empower environmental scientists? Are you involved in getting people encouraged to um, take up that kind of academic work? And how would that work? Yeah, so um, as our aims of, of, of the organization, um, one of them is to um, inspire and inform and, and, and a strand of that work is um, to inspire people to begin their journey um, into learning more about environmental science. Um, so that could be anyone who is, you know, working in another profession and wants to learn a little bit more about it, or, you know, we go right down to trying to inspire kind of primary school um, uh, pupils to you know, start on that journey of, of engaging with nature. Um, and we look at the, the kind of pathways through the whole of education so that people um, try to either have environmental science embedded within other subjects. So that kind of way of organizing education around looking at, at, at problems is one approach. Um, you know, getting students out of the classroom and into nature is another approach or getting them to, to take you know, pure environmental science subjects. So there's like an environmental science A-level in this country. Um, there's a, 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 a natural history uh, GCSE on the way, and um, there's you know, a plethora of, of, of university courses that are in environmental science and related courses. So someone that is standing from the outside uh, looking in or listening to this interview, what do you think they are unaware of when it comes to environmental science that you would like any knowledge you would like to share? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting um, discipline, environmental science, because the debate has really raised since the late, late 1960s when environmental science really emerged as an academic subject about whether it's a discipline in its own right or whether it's the application of other disciplines to a single issue, the environment. So is it just the application of physics, chemistry, and biology to, to environmental problems, or is it something in itself? And I think it's kind of is a, a, a dynamic discipline in that it keeps, it's like a magpie discipline. It steals things from everywhere, all over the academic landscape. And um, whilst it, it, it used to be focused on those, those kind of core sciences, you know, physics, uh, biology and chemistry, increasingly it pulls in um, other disciplines like um, engineering and social science because so much of the evidence has to lead towards kind of behavioral change within individuals. So you need to understand the way in which individuals think then and, and how you influence their behaviors. Um, so it starts to pull in lots of different disciplines. So it really makes this kind of multidisciplinary um, uh discipline in it in, in itself um but i think the one kind of takeaway that i would want your listeners to take about what environmental science is and and and, and how it's different is its fundamental way of looking at the world um that i think is quite different to a lot of other disciplines and professions because at the heart of it is something called systems thinking where we see the world as a series of kind of complex and interlinking systems um, they may be natural cycles, such as the nitrogen cycle or the water cycle, or human systems, such as like, patterns of consumption. Um, so you can put a frame around some of these systems. You could look at like the energy system or the food system, and you can disaggregate that system, you know, pull it apart, examine in closer detail a particular facet of a problem. But you should never forget that you're looking at something that is part of a much wider system and that any framing that you put on it only gives you a partial insight and that type of system thinking leads to a couple of revelations i think the interconnectedness between systems that most processes in nature are circular not linear but most businesses operate in a linear fashion and it doesn't mimic nature in, in any way um that we as 
individuals in any sector, if we, we are to tackle some of these problems, we can't work in individual silos. We have to work in a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary way. And that, you know, relationships within society and between things are really, really important. And I think once you kind of dig into that systems thinking and begin to appreciate the way in which environmental scientists view the world, that cascades down all sorts of lessons for anyone in society, whether you're a CEO or a company, CEO of a company, or you're an engineer within a factory, it really helps you broaden your own thinking about your own work and the way in which something that you think that you're doing that is bounded, you know, that has only impacts within a very small area, it doesn't actually. It has a set of kind of knock-on impacts, be that to, you know, the local economy, um, be that to the emissions that you create that then have a kind of global impact or con contribute towards a global impact. And it's really, you know, a very interesting way of, of, of looking at the world. What I imagine in front of me when I hear you describe the system thinking is most decision I see leaders or company do that makes me scared are decisions that are not taking into account the interconnectivity of all of these systems. Those kind of decisions becomes a win-lose situations and very short term. So to spread that idea, uh, I think is so important. So what is your kind of vision for how environmental science will uh, progress in the future? What would you like uh, to happen? So I think I would like to see environmental science at the boardroom level elevated to the same kind of level that you would see evidence from um, your finance department or your legal department. So you can imagine when a board is making a decision that um, it's relying on a number of different evidence bases. Um, and you'll be familiar you know, in companies that you work with, that that finance is, is uh, something you get regular papers on. You know, you're seeing your quarterly um, targets and projections um, you're working up an annual budget and i'd like to see environmental science elevated to a similar level where you start to look at how your um, company operates and how different decisions will result in um, the depletion or the adding to you know natural capital um, and maybe I should explain for, for people what natural capital is. So natural capital is is taking a similar kind of accounting approach to, to nature and trying to put like an economic value onto things that exist within nature. Um, so we have things called um, ecosystem services, which are all the kind of free um, services that nature uh, provides for us. So they might be things like um, nutrient cycling, soil formation, you know, clean air, fuel, um, protection against flooding, protection against disease, um, cultural services that might arise from your kind of appreciation of nature. So when you go out, you know, does it make you a lot happier? Do you enjoy the view? Uh, do you enjoy listening to the sound, sounds of, of, of bird songs? And whilst, you know, incredibly complicated calculation, we can start to um, formulate some value around that. Um, and so when you as a government or a company make a set of decisions that either um, deplete those natural, that natural capital or add to it, you should be taking account of that within your own business. Yeah, I would love to see more of that holistic kind of thinking. And maybe even if governments got on board with that idea and they somehow supported companies that did make decisions in that way and uh, taxed companies that didn't. Uh, I wish we could explore this much more, but at the same time, we're coming up towards the end of this interview. So if someone feels excited to learn more about environmental science and would like to somehow be involved in, with your organization, maybe even support your organization, uh, what can they do? So if they 
are a professional who is in environmental science or is studying environmental science, I would urge them to join the organization. Um, and that's our, our primary focus of our, of our membership. Um, but our wider mission is about um, influencing um, society towards um, a more sustainable, um, or transforming society to, to, to a more sustainable state. Um, so that I would just order I would ask is is you learn a bit more about environmental science most we have a open access philosophy at the organization so most of our resources are, are available free you can read our journal for free it's open access and um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you know the the variety of different um, webinars and lectures that we put on um, some of them are very technical but some of them are aimed um, very much for the um, uh, the average um, layman to to be able to um, access as well so so do just have an explore around our website beautiful and what is the address for your website and it's the hyphen or, or dash ies.org beautiful adam donnan thank you so much for taking the time to speak with great.com today thanks very much it's been a lot of fun it has been. And for you listening, if you also had fun, if you enjoyed this, if you would like for more people to learn about environmental science, please press subscribe on YouTube or your podcast channel. That will help us get through the algorithms so more people can hear conversations like this. We would highly appreciate it. And uh, we we'll see you in the next episode.